guys welcome back to another what's for dinner this week is actually going to be a little bit shorter video but I did include five recipes still they're all just super simple and quick and easy to make so if you like simple recipes that you can throw together really easily on a busy weeknight this is definitely the video for you we had a really busy week and I just needed simple and quick easy meals for my kiddos so that is what I included in today's video if you are new here and you like cooking videos I do a what's for dinner every single Sunday. I do meal prep videos, grocery hauls, tons of food related content. So if that is something that you're interested in, definitely go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into today's video. So for the first recipe this week, I'm going to be making some baked chicken parmesan. We really enjoyed this recipe. I wasn't sure how we would like it because I normally do like a fried chicken parmesan, but I will say it was actually really good and I really liked the recipe. I actually found this recipe over on my friend Julia's channel. She is so sweet. I will definitely have her channel linked down below for you guys. And I will also link the original recipe that she followed. So that will all be in the description box, but I am just starting off by by cutting two chicken breasts in half so they are nice thin pieces. And then over here I'm just going to be mixing up my breadcrumb mixture for on top of the chicken. So you're going to need a cup of panko breadcrumbs, half a cup of parmesan cheese. It did call for fresh grated but I just used the powdered kind. And then for seasonings you're going to need a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then I did decide to add in a little bit of dried parsley just because I normally do add that into my normal chicken parmesan and then you're just going to get all of that mixed together and ready to go. And then over in my other bowl, I'm just cracking two eggs in here and getting those whisked up together. This is just going to be the egg wash for on the chicken. In my old chicken parmesan recipe that I usually use, you actually add a little bit of milk in there as well, but this one you don't need that, it's just eggs, so super simple. And then here you see me trying to salt and pepper my chicken breast. This plate was not big enough, but this is me being lazy and not wanting to get a different one. So you can enjoy watching me struggle to get salt and pepper on both sides of these chicken breasts. And now it is time to actually coat our chicken. So I'm just dipping my chicken right into the egg wash and then straight into the breadcrumb mixture. You do wanna get a nice bit coating on here. I will say I was being extremely lazy on this night. I did not want to cook and I did not do the best job coating these. I felt like it was very sparse once I finished. So I eventually did go back in and add a little bit of that extra crumb topping on top because it just needed it. I was being lazy and I didn't wanna cook. So there's a little real life for you sometimes I don't want to cook either and that is why this week is all about super simple and easy meals for you guys And this is where I went back in and was adding the extra breadcrumb mixture right on top. I did feel like it made a difference. You can probably see in this footage here where the chicken was a little bit patchy. It just was not super well coated. So I decided to go back in and I think it definitely made a difference. And then I just baked these in a 400 degree oven for I think it was right around 20 minutes until they were all the way cooked through. While those were cooking up, I did just get this marinara sauce heating up and I was also prepping my spaghetti. So I was actually using this veggie spaghetti on this night and I will say I really, really like this brand of pasta. Of course you get a little bit of veggies in there and we really like it. Salt the water a little bit and it comes out absolutely perfect. Once my chicken parmesan was fully cooked through, I just went ahead and topped it with some of that marinara sauce. I did quite a bit just because we do like a lot of marinara sauce on ours, but you can definitely do what your family prefers. And then you're also going to top it with some mozzarella cheese. I just used the pre-shredded stuff in the bag because you know, lazy mom life. Mm -hmm. 
And then I just stuck this back into the oven on broil for a couple of minutes until the cheese was just starting to brown on top and everything was really nice and melted together. To go with this chicken parmesan, I wanted something super easy, so I am actually just making some pan fried zucchini. Super easy to make and my kids actually really eat this well. So if you have picky kiddos, you can definitely try out this recipe. It's a super mild zucchini recipe and your kids actually might really enjoy it. So I'm just taking one zucchini this was a pretty big one so I actually opted to cut out the seeds from inside of it and get that cut up into pretty small pieces and then I just heated up a little bit of olive oil and added that zucchini in there with a little bit of pepper salt and garlic powder just season that up to taste and you're just gonna cook this up for probably like four or five minutes you don't want to cook it very long or your zucchini will get mushy but just cook it over medium heat until it is the consistency that you like and here is how the chicken parmesan turned out we really really enjoyed this recipe the next night we had one of my personal favorites which is walking tacos or talk when a big whatever you refer to them as but I'm just starting off with one pound of lean ground beef and I'm basically just making taco meat so you can make it however you want but I always add in a can of diced tomatoes with a seasoning packet and then a little bit of water and just mix that together and let it come to a simmer for about five minutes or so just until everything is really well heated through and combined. And of course for tacos you're going to need some lettuce so I'm just chopping this up. This was actually from our garden. We had some really nice lettuce come up finally so I am just getting that all chopped up and ready to go for our walking tacos. And that is seriously all the prep that you need for this recipe. It could not be any more simple. I'm actually serving mine in a bowl, more like a taco salad, just because they did not have the small Dorito bags that you would normally get at the store. So I just crushed some Doritos up and put it on top. And then I also decided to top it with some shredded cheese. I did some peppers in there because our family loves peppers. Tomatoes would also be amazing on this or really whatever toppings you like. You could do onions, olives, you know whatever your family enjoys top it with some salsa and sour cream give that a really good mix together and you have yourself a delicious and an easy dinner On this next night, I am making some meatball marinara subs. This is a family favorite and literally one of the easiest recipes to throw together. I'm just taking about half a big of these Italian meatballs with a whole jar of marinara sauce and I'm just letting those cook together. They probably cook for maybe right around like 20 minutes or so just until the meatballs weren't frozen. And then over into my little dish here, I'm just prepping my sub buns. These are just the fresh buns that you would normally pick up at like Walmart or a bakery they were really good and they're just super simple for this type of dinner so I'm just cutting a couple of those up and getting them ready to go and then all you're gonna do is top those with your meatballs I usually put right around like six or seven in here this is gonna be a very filling meal so you could definitely like split one of these two and it will be plenty of food but you're gonna put the meatballs in there and I do like to add a little bit of the marinara sauce right on top because I am all about the marinara sauce Sauce. and then of course you're gonna to top it with some cheese so for a classic meatball sub you're gonna to want to use mozzarella and you're just gonna pop this either into the broiler or you can put it in like a 400 degree oven just watch it close to make sure that nothing burns but that is literally it for this recipe super simple quick and easy dinner that your whole family is going to love 
For dinner on this night, I made us some fried onion pork chops and they were super delicious and easy. I made some pork chops with some baby red mashed potatoes to go with it and they were so amazing. So I'm excited to share this recipe with you guys. So I'm taking four pork chops. Mine were pretty thick. I think thinner would be even better for this recipe, but I'm just using up what I had on hand. But if you have an option, I would definitely say go thinner if you can. And I'm just seasoning those pork chops up with some salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. And then once your pork chops are really well seasoned, you're actually just going to take some sour cream and drop that right onto the top of the pork chops. I would say I did like a heaping tablespoon for each pork chop. Like I said, these were really thick ones. So if you have thinner pork chops, like the recipe says, you might be able to get away with using less sour cream, but that is what I did. And then I'm just topping it with some of these French fried onions. These are like the onions that you would find on a green bean casserole and they were super good on these pork chops. And then I just put these right into a 350 degree oven for right around like 45 minutes or so. You just wanna make sure that that pork is cooked all the way through. I decided to pair those pork chops with some baby red mashed potatoes, which are one of my absolute favorites. So I just took that bag of mashed potatoes. It was about a one and a half pound bag. I made sure they were washed really well, scrubbed them up really good. And then I'm taking those potatoes and just cutting them into quarter size pieces and popping them right into the bowl. I'm actually gonna be cooking these in my Instant Pot. This was my first time cooking potatoes in there. And I will say they turned out really, really well and I will definitely be doing it again. I just popped those potatoes right into my Instant Pot and I just added water until the potatoes were about covered. That's what the recipe said to do. I will have it linked down below for you guys. And I also did add in a little bit of sea salt, maybe around like a teaspoon if I had to guess. And then I am just pressure cooking these on high for about eight minutes. Once they were done, I did a quick release to let all of that steam out and I'm draining these potatoes off. And then I just added those right back into my Instant Pot and I'm just getting everything mashed together. So I'm just using my hand masher for this. Nothing fancy or special about it, but I'm just mashing those up until I got the consistency that I wanted. I didn't want them super, super smooth. I wanted a little bit of chunks in there, but definitely not too chunky either. And then for seasonings, I am using some black pepper. I'm gonna use some sea salt, lots of parsley and lots of garlic powder. You definitely want lots of garlic in this one because they're not served with gravy it's just plain potatoes but I promise you the flavor for these was super delicious I also added in some sour cream I would say probably about a third of a cup for this amount of potatoes and then I also added in a couple really good sized tablespoons of butter with a little splash of milk and I'm just getting all of that mixed together you can definitely add a little bit more salt or pepper tweak the seasonings to your liking but this is seriously such a good recipe for really delicious cream potatoes it reminds me of what I used to get at weddings all the time this seems very similar and then this is what those pork chops look like when they came out of the oven they were super delicious and we really love this entire meal this next recipe was super simple and also very delicious. I'm just making some crispy chicken thighs in the air fryer. So I'm actually starting off by preheating my air fryer. I set it at 380 degrees for about five minutes or so while I'm getting the chicken thighs ready. This is just gonna let them get nice and crispy when it's all preheated. So for these chicken thighs, you're just gonna put those right into a gallon size Ziploc. And then these are gonna be heavily seasoned. So I seasoned them up up with about half a teaspoon of salt. I did use sea salt, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of oregano, as well as half a teaspoon of onion powder. And then you're literally just gonna shake all of these seasonings together and try and get everything really well distributed on all of the pieces of chicken.
Once you have your chicken thighs really well coated, you're actually just gonna add them right into your air fryer. I did spray mine with a little bit of oil in there, and then I'm just popping those chicken thighs right in there. I tried to do the skin side up, and my chicken thighs were pretty dang big, so they took a little bit longer to cook. I would say I cooked mine for probably right around like 25 minutes or so, but you're obviously just gonna want to make sure to check them to make sure that the internal temp reaches 165 degrees but these did turn out super crispy the flavor and the spices were totally on point in this recipe I will have this full recipe link down below for you guys but we definitely really enjoyed this meal All right guys, that is going to wrap up this what's for dinner video. I hope that you really enjoyed it and that it gave you some meal ideas and inspiration for your week. If you like the simple recipes, definitely leave me a comment down below because we do lots of simple cooking in this house and I would love to make more videos just like this. But that is going to be it for today's video. I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, it feels were mine. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free, without a care.